all synced up. Clearing my sinuses. And loading up the game. Okay, so. Hello, this is Kestrel North. My very, very first Let's Play video. One of hopefully many. And today, I am Let's Playing Creativerse. This is not a new world. This is an old world and I've been playing with my young daughter. This is... This is a autumn leafy that I've tamed. You can see he's got a little a little dooley... Well, he's sleeping now, fine. He had a little dooley thing there on... Um, just underneath his chin. Which uh, denotes that he's been tamed. So, here we are. This is Creativerse. It is a voxel-based sandbox game. Sandbox survival slash game. Very, very reminiscent of, obviously, Minecraft. But there are a few key differences. What are those key differences? Well, I have no idea. Let's, let's find out together, shall we? Here's one key difference. I can jump two blocks instead of one. Here's another key difference. My character does not automatically go up one block steps. I have to jump. That's actually kind of annoying. It's fine. Another big difference is that I do not have a pickaxe. Or any axe, for that matter. What I have on my wrist... Oh, you could see it. Uh, you could see it right there. Is called a mining cell. This is a stone mining cell. And this is what you use to interact with, the with, with blocks. It's sort of like a vacuum cleaner. It's actually kind of cool. So, what does this mean? Well, what it means is that instead of carrying around a pickaxe, a axe, a shovel, and whatever else the hell you normally would carry around in Minecraft, all you really need is this one diggy dig apparatus. Another big difference um, in Creativerse as opposed to Minecraft is uh, Creativerse has a definite source, definite not source, definite, um, a definite progression. So here's a little, a little mine I dug, or inhaled, I suppose you could say. So in Minecraft, for example, you could conceivably craft yourself a stone pickaxe. Hell, I think you could actually just craft yourself a wood pickaxe, and you could basically trout. You could basically dig your way down to the center of the. Minecraft world, all the way down to bedrock. You wouldn't be able to gather a lot of the the um, things you'd find along the way, but you could conceivably do it. Now, in Creativerse, you can't do that. You're going to hit a spot right here. See where the thing is red? You're going to hit a spot where you can no longer progress. I can't dig through this anymore. I need to make the next version of my power cell. I can't even really dig down to here uh, with the with the uh, with the power cell that you get when you first start the game. See? So you uh, so you definitely have to create, you definitely have to continuously build newer and more powerful power cells if you want to get farther into the world. Which is an interesting, it's an interesting theory. Also, another interesting thing is that uh, torches actually cost a fair bit to create. So you can't just create like a hundred, a stack of a hundred and go littering littering your your mine with it. And there are more powerful uh, there are more powerful torches that you can get. These are all these are the least powerful. So you can see it takes a lot of them to light something up and it doesn't do a very good job. You can make coal and what else is there? Uh here they are. So you start off with moss, then you go up to coal, uh, then you go up to wood-burning lamps, which is actually a really stupid name for them because they burn coal. I never noticed that. All right, never mind. I have a couple, a couple of different colored lamps if you, if you want to. God, I don't even know what the point of these are, but whatever. And then you have gas lamps, which again burn coal. So fine. And then you have architect torches, which burn architect arc stones. Blah, 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 blah. So yeah, and the only weapon you have is a sword. 
So, uh, oh, what version are we running here? We are ver running version... We are running... Um, sorry, release 23. And as of this release, many of the things that I find to be I found to be extremely easy to make, like swords, are now a heck of a lot more difficult. Now you actually have to kill a number of creatures in order to build these swords. So the wooden one is fairly simple, it only takes wooden vine. And the stone, I believe, used to just take stone wood rods and I think stone rods or something like that. Now they actually take these rocks to rock things which you can only get by hunting and or taming and harvesting your pets. So this is actually kind of a pain because I found the battle system in this game to be kind of a little trickier than in Minecraft. Minecraft, I couldn't, I at least, could mow through quite a few, could mow through skeletons and zombies and it wasn't really that big a deal. But a lot of the creatures in this game seem to have, seem to do have, they have quite a lot of damage. And um, you can make armor, but armor again is not a heck is not really easy to get. Ooh, I need these. These red flowers are used for making uh, power cells. Sorry, mining cells. So you base so and um, an armor breaks very quickly, like really quickly. Whoops! Up, 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 up. Oh, he's al he's almost dead. This is a this is a, a knight. This is a knight creature. He's gone. And we'll see those. Um, we might even not see those. It's not going to be that long of a video, I'm hoping. Anyway. So yeah. There we go. Let's grab some mushrooms. Yeah, you grab anything with this power cell. So those are some of the differences. These are the guys that you would get the rock the rock things from. And uh, they pack a bit of a punch. They're, ta they're, uh, they're harmless though unless you attack them. There are a couple of mobs out here that will attack without provocation. So the daytime can be a bit dangerous. Some of these guys uh, pack quite the punch. Woo! Whee! Uh, the control system is a little bit muddy and soupy and squishy. Uh, <laughs> um, it's been... Uh, I've read a few things on forums and people don't really like it. It's not tight. Uh, they've improved it. I didn't notice an improvement. <laughs> They said they improved it. I haven't noticed a huge improvement, but once you start playing the game, you get used to it real fast. I mean, I don't think I really died that many times. I've fallen off a few things because I wasn't being careful or I was moving a little too fast. But um, I don't think it's ever actually killed me. Oh, look at this guy in Autumn Leafy. He's all red. The mobs in this game are adorable and at the same time incredibly creepy. Look at this. Look at this guy's eye. <laughs> I can see into your soul. Ugh. Creepy. So this is, I think this is the beginning, aut this is autumn wood. This is the beginning of an autumn. There we go. Over here, there's a different biome. It's an autumn biome. Whee! Woo! I love doing that. Alright. Let's see here. So, there's a few game. there's a few things about this game that I prefer over Minecraft. Really. One thing is the teleport. When you start this game, you get a home teleporting pad. All you do is you press T, and there is my home, and I can teleport there from anywhere in the world at any time I want, and there is no cooldown. This is immensely useful for me in games like this, with a games without a mini map where I I get lost. I can get lost very easily when I'm just wandering around enjoying the sights the sun starts to set and oh my gosh I've forgotten the way home or I've completely forgotten where my base is and I never find it again this has happened to me before so you, being able to teleport home at any time or if you're really deep in a dungeon it's absolutely it's so cool not only that but you can have your friends teleport to your home base too so if you have a friend join you on your on your game in your game world all you have to do is open up your tele your home teleport and they can teleport right to your place. You can start playing together right away, which is great fun. That brings me to another thing that I absolutely love about this game, and that is the ability to join to multiplay. Now, I'm probably quite alone in this, but my husband and I have not been able to play Minecraft together. Either I don't know what it is. We're in the same house. 
We're only a floor apart, and yet our computers refuse to sync and play together. Somebody, one of us will have terrible lag, and the other person will be like, what? I don't have any lag, I don't know what your problem is. So, it's just, it's really, really difficult. It's a game that I've always wanted to play with my husband or my family. Woo! I never get tired of that. Sorry, I'm sure you guys will very quickly, so I gotta stop now. Anyway, so, but in this game, all the worlds are server-side. So that's both good and bad. That's good because it's extremely easy for people to join your world. Anybody can join your world. Now that's quite literally. Anybody could join this world if they knew what the world was called. Um, I password protected this world because it's just for me and my young daughter. But if you don't password protect your world, literally, once someone finds the name, anyone can join. But that means that, unlike with Minecraft, you don't have to pay for a server, you don't have to, you know, fiddle around with IP addresses, you don't have to do any of that. You just pick the world, get the password or not, and go. It's fantastic. Whee! Another thing that I love about this game are the trees. Now, I can't remember, because I, I admit it's been a little while since I played vanilla Minecraft, but I don't think Vanilla Minecraft has huge redwood trees. Um, I believe that was a mod that I added that had where um, when I had these gigantic trees. In Creativeverse, um, these trees are everywhere, and some of them can get to absolute gi just huge proportions. So again, good and bad. It's fantastic to look at, but if you're hoping to clear a forest for land or you know, any other type of reason, you're going to have a hard time. These trees can take days and days to properly get rid of all the way from, like, you know, from the top up. Yeah, you can see here that I'm having just a little bit of trouble climbing this tree. Excuse me, the controls are just a bit, and I'm also getting a wee bit of lag. Excuse me. Lag has not been a big deal for me, but every now and then I'll get, um, I'll get a bit, I'll get a block that refuses, that doesn't disappear until, you know, a few seconds after I've obviously gathered it. Um, oops! Uh-oh. Oh! That was my fault. Oh well. You can see it didn't kill me. Whatever doesn't kill me makes me stronger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, the control scheme, the controls definitely take a little getting used to. They are soupy and squishy and squashy. So, it's definitely going to feel like you're a wee bit... There is a, um, there's a crouch button, just like Minecraft. So, oops, sorry about that. Okay. Um, it was just my email. Uh, there's a crouch button, which is C. And you can walk. See, I'm trying to walk farther. You can't. I can't leave this particular. So you can. This is. This makes it easier when you're building, or indeed when you're trying to scoot around a really big ravine. But it's a button press. I haven't looked into the settings yet, so I don't know if you. Because I found the shift in Minecraft, or I can't remember what I what I used to hold. But the hold hold press would be much much better. But it's a it's a key press. Fine. Woo. So yeah, jumping around these giant trees is is a lot of fun. And look at that. You can see for you can see for miles. There's snow on top of that mountain. I haven't even been there yet. It's so cool. Uh, yeah, you can jump a lot higher than you can in Minecraft, and it makes it really does make walking up on the trees kind of ex kind of exciting. Look, there's mountains over there. I have not been there yet. And there's forest over there. So far I have seen... There's... Whoops. Oh, that's my fault. Uh, right, hang on. There we go. Um, so far I've seen... There's the autumn forest, regular forest, grasslands, jungles, tundras. I haven't seen a regular desert, but there is savanna. There's the autumn jungle over there. So you can see some really tall trees over here. This is not really a good spot to show this, but there are places where when you get up to the tree line, it's almost like a completely other world. It's a canopy world, and it's super, super cool. 
trying to just kind of tiptoe over here. Ooh, I need those red flowers. Uh, Ooh, here we go. There we go. These flowers are used to make uh, the stone mining cell. And so there, you start off with nothing. There's the wood mining cell, stone, obsidian, and iron. So the best thing usually is, especially if you're farting around like I am right now, is to take off your your mining cell to save it. Because they do run out, and then you have to make another one. Sometimes that's a pain in the ass, and sometimes it's not, you know. I'm pretty far in to make, and I could make a couple of wood ones, but the obsidian one, you noticed I have it in my bags, I'm not using it because I don't want to use it out. Now of course, I've made it all the way up here, and now I have to make my way all the way down. I can always just play around up here and then teleport home afterwards. I'm not gonna jump though. <laughs> that actually could kill me from this height. The trees are huge. Huge trees. Uh, well, I guess I can drill my way down. I hate doing this honestly because I hate the way it makes the trees look. You got trees with holes or bits missing and it just kind of looks weird. Now, these trees do grow in real time. So there we go. So if you plant a tree, or indeed if you leave a small tree for long enough, in physical days, it will grow bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, I don't know if this includes if you build inside it. I'm pretty sure that in my other world I actually have a, um, a house inside a tree and the, the tree is large enough to hold my house instead of me having to build outside the tree. It's a huge tree. And uh, the trees around it seem to have just gotten bigger and bigger, but I don't think mine has grown. So we still have some time before the sun goes down. Maybe we'll just poke around the mountains and see. Because I don't think I've ever seen a mountain range. At the top right, you can see the uh, the biome, the temperature, and uh, the time. Oh, see, I, have, I took off my... Uh, I need to put it back on now took off my uh, my mining cell and I couldn't mine anything here. Oh, here's a different kind of tree. Yep. Ooh, pine cones. R sorry, rhyme cones. I'm so sorry. Rhyme cones is what I meant to say. And this is a elderwood. So it's an obvious pine tree. See how high we can get before we have to go home. Yeah, climbing definitely has more of a sense of, I don't know, adventure than it does in Minecraft because you, can't do the, you definitely have a bit more of a bouncy feel to you. Bouncy, bouncy, bouncy. Ooh! Oh, check that out! Ooh, what is that? Is it going to attack me, I think is what I should really be thinking about. Oh, I've never seen one of those before. That is so cool. I'm probably about to die. It's a good thing I have a ton of the health potions because I have almost no armor. Ooh, what's this? Peak stone. Ooh. Oh, there's no recipes associated with peak stone. That sucks because it looks really cool. What do we got here? A Rambo. Hey, it's Rambo! Sorry, that was. They seem pretty friendly. I think if it had been. If it was. It probably would have attacked me by now. That's good. Sometimes it's hard to tell which ones, which uh, day mobs are going to attack you and basically eat your face, and which ones are just going to sit there and stare at your face. So, you know, it's easy to tell at night, <laughs> which I'll show you in a bit. Oh, look at this. Ooh, look over there, too. Cool. You can see the canopy over here. Just awesome. Oh, you can, and down in the in the bottom left there, you can see my uh, temperature meter, which is uh, just teeny tiny bit. I haven't seen that in gameplay much myself, probably because I haven't really been to any of the Arctic regions. I think the heat temperature definitely goes up once you hit once you hit lower uh, lower uh, underground tiers, where you're going to encounter lava and stuff. It is getting dark. It's a cave. It's up here. That's just regular stone. 
Yeah, it's definitely getting dark, so we're gonna teleport home. I love the teleporting sequence. <laughs> so cool. Alright. And I will show you the little house that uh, my daughter and I have made. I really enjoy... I mostly enjoy um, making uh, houses inside trees. just have enough time maybe to show you. Maybe in the morning. Well, maybe in another video. Because I don't want to... The night creatures, unlike in Minecraft, where you could probably have your door open and zombies might just, you know, mill about a little bit. In this game, if you give these critters a chance, they will just swarm in and eat you. Eat your face. So yeah. Whoops! Might help if I closed all the doors. There. <laughs> Let's open up the welcome mat. So here's our, our little tree house. It's still, it's a work in progress. A tree that we picked was not quite big enough to have rooms inside, so I had to make some thatched walls around. And uh, here are the here's the wood burning lamp, which casts a beautiful white light. I like to use these in dungeons mostly uh, because they really help light the place up. Here's my autumn leafy. If I were to see, he's hungry. If I were to feed him, uh, he likes bread, which I haven't done any um, any farming yet, so I can't feed him. If I were to feed him. He would, um, I could then harvest him, and I'm gonna have to do another video to sh to with in my other world where I actually have farm plots and critters and and uh, stables and that sort of thing because it looks bloody disturbing when you harvest them. It really does. <laughs> and then you clean them off, and they're and then they get hungry again, and the cycle continues. You can get a lot of you can get a lot of things that you would normally get by killing them, just by feeding and harvesting them. So. Yeah. Also, in my other world, I actually have a teleport network. In this world, I haven't made it yet. This is my touchstone. Don't touch it. Uh, <laughs> so, and uh, this is what you start the game with. Uh, you can only place one. Once you place another one, this one will disappear. But once you get up to the obsidian level, you can start making your own your own uh, teleporting network. Uh, and I'll have to do make another video to show that because it's really really cool and another thing that would probably benefit Minecraft a hell of a lot at least for me because I get lost easily here's some beds you can sleep in them to bring morning faster if you're playing with other people in multiplayer um, in order to bring the morning faster you all have to sleep in a bed that's why there's two. Oh, and if you can look through the window there are the uh, night monsters. Uh, they glow, which is super cool because it means that even I can see them and I won't miss them. And they're super, super aggressive. You don't even have to, you don't even have to really get that close to them. They will sniff you out and they will find you. They will eat you. And uh, the pigs, the night pigsies, don't look too bad, but I find the night leafies look really disturbing. I think it's their giant eye. I had to get, I got rid of some of these mirror these uh, the windows so I can't show you but they look freaking creepy. Ugh. No. I had to get rid of the ladder cuz the ladders are a bit fiddly and my daughter was having a terrible time going up and down the ladder. I had to make some stairs. I prefer ladders personally. Okay, so I'm going to round out this video just by quickly showing you how the crafting system works. Just another difference from Minecraft. Uh, instead of placing blocks in a grid, uh, you simply craft stuff. Here's the washer. You need blocks of water, uh, obsidian uh, bars, and some stone rods. And so on and so forth. Uh, oh! Here is how you get ores with an extractor. Maybe I'll show that next video. Uh, the lamps, there's potions, armor, explosives, which are... Excuse me, they're fun. Here's the decor. There's a lot of decor. And the way you unlock more decor is by building decor. That is cool. However, I'm not a huge fan of it. Because some of the stuff, like say, stairs and, uh, I don't know, just other things I might not necessarily want to make. So there's this bungalow wall which takes wildwood. You get this wall by harvesting wildwood. Gotta find a tree gotta harvest wildwood, so on and so forth. The thing is that if you want, say, the bungalow roof, which looks pretty cool, 
but you don't necessarily want the wall. You still have to make this wall before you can get the roof. And once you make the wall, you're stuck with the wall. You know, you could delete it, but you've got all these, that's kind of a waste of all these materials that you've used to craft it. Not a big deal, but some of this stuff it is. And uh, there's some of the stuff like this obsidian brick wall that might unlock more different kinds of walls. But I'm not in the position to make it because I don't have a heck of a lot of obsidian yet. So I have to wait. And again, if I make it and I decide I don't want to use it, I've only got eight. You know, what am I going to use it for? There's no way to reclaim at least some of these materials, which would be kind of nice. Then you've got chests, doors, fences, windows. Uh, I like the windows. I have, I have a bit of a problem with the windows because... Um, from the inside, they seem to be kind of backwards, and it's kind of—it's a little hard to explain, but because um, I don't have the materials on me to make them. But once you put them in, it's very frosted from the inside. But once you go outside and look into the house, it's very clear. And I haven't been able to figure out if that's just me and my ineptitude, and I can't seem to figure out how to place them properly, or if it's actually like that, which is kind of counterintuitive. You wouldn't want people looking in as easily as you can look out, but whatever. Okay, so this is my intro, quick intro to Creativerse. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. One more thing, if you're thinking of purchasing this game, it costs, uh, it's on Steam, and uh, I'm in Canada, so it, it, was, it, uh, was me, it was about 20 bucks Canadian for me, but when it is, it's, on, it's in uh, early access right now, but when it is officially released, it will be free to play. So what that means is they're going to have to find a way to make money beyond, you know what I mean, right? Free to play games. Um, where's, there's, there is a shop. Oh, you know what? I think I have to quit to get into it. Do I? I think I do. Yes, I do. All right. Well, I was going to go. Let's go. Oh, no, sorry. Here's the store right here. So here, here's what they're thinking of doing right now. They're going to have a store. These are blueprints, which you can you can purchase, you put down, and then you have to supply the blocks to fill them with. There's some pretty cool stuff here. I, I think this is actually a really good idea. And then over here they have recipes for blocks that you can't gain through, through playing the game. Again, I think this is a really great idea, and I would totally... Um, I would totally want to support them by buying these things because you don't want them going with any, you know, something that would inhibit your gameplay. They might also consider uh, charging you to, to create your own worlds or create servers, so that's another thing to keep in mind. Okay, uh, this has been my Ramblin' Creativerse video. I hope you enjoyed it, and um, we will uh, hopefully see you next time. Bye-bye!